All right, let's see what's in the box. Now, clever me, I already got the box open, so let's check it out. So, if you guys remember, not too long ago, I had a trip out to Maris, and this is one of those safety concerns. And so, I know a lot of people don't look at uh, sway bar end links as very important. Um, and for the most people, it's not. As far as being the strength and heavy duty and overall capability of them. But, if you tow a trailer everywhere you go, and you go wheeling, and you break a sway bar end link, let me tell you something. You are going to wish that you had upgraded them prior to the, the stock and or the metal cloaks. I had the metal cloaks and I snapped them. And the reason why that's a big deal is because on the way home, I couldn't go much more than about 30 miles an hour without the entire truck and trailer wanting to walk all over the highway. So thank God I was only about 30 minutes from my home. I couldn't imagine if I'd have been any farther. So, what snapped on the metal cloak in link is the actual bolt that goes through the sway bar. Uh, it's sheared right off, and so that's a weak point. Well, if you're going wheeling and you're dragging a trailer, or if you're going overlanding, you might want to make sure that this is something you upgrade. Because after that scenario, um, I wouldn't have passed it off. Uh, that being said, for for what they are and the money, it just makes sense. These are heavy duty, made by Evo. We all know that for the JT, these guys make most of all the heavy duty parts. Look at the Heinz. So it's a step up in size and strength. And so this is something that will help us moving forward be more conscious about what we're doing and know that, that what we're using can handle it. Well. I guess the new owner anyway. But, either way, you can't do things half-assed, guys. We have to do things the right way. And so, this is what I consider the right way. Anyway, this won't be a complete how-to. They're pretty simple. Two bolts up on top. Uh, simple alignment and using lock nuts. I will show some of it, uh, but not all of it. Anyway, check it out, guys. Okay, guys, pretty simple. So. Here it is, sway bar and link. And again, this right here, this straight through bolt that's attached to the metal cloak and the factory uh, sway bar and link is what snapped, snapped right here. So obviously going down the highway, this was able to move at will. With it being able to move at will, it literally allowed uh, the Jeep to move, or the trailer to move the Jeep all over the place, which was super unnerving. Uh, so all you need, uh, you need a 19 for up here, and you need an 18 for down here. Now you will need something to capture this sometimes because a lot of times, it, obviously this is just a straight through bolt and it wants to spin inside here and then we'll call it uh, uh, this joint housing. Well that stud wants to turn, so sometimes you have to grab it and break it loose. But either way, pretty simple. This one off, this one off. You put the new one back in, associate the Himes to this height, leaving the other one connected at the same time, so you'll know it's natural ride height, so therefore you have the natural tension on the sway bar. You associate this one first, get it in, get it locked in, and then move to the other side. I wanna go over one thing real quick. Um, this is something I always use. Okay, you can get it on Amazon. It's super important. Reason being is, these are two dissimilar metals, and what you don't want to happen is them to corrode if you ever need to adjust because you change the lift, or maybe you want it stiffer, or you want, you want the ride a little looser to feel more of the road. Whatever the case may be, you need to make sure that that's something that you use. Another thing, just get some of these on Amazon. I already tore this guy. I'm grabbing a bolt. But um, this stuff, if you've never used it, anti-seize will literally like it's not that you put half the tube out there but anyway pretty simple procedure show you real quick break it open you're gonna run these nuts back just as 
just a safe point. I mean, you're obviously gonna, not going to run all that. But, but you, again, like I said, so reach down in there, get some of this stuff. Here's what it looks like. And you just need a little on the bolt, okay? And that's kind of what you're going for. You don't need a lot. You're literally just doing this, okay? That's it. And that's it. Now see what I'm saying? Like this stuff will continue spreading and spreading. Look, it just keeps going and going and going. So that's where we're at. As a quick comparison, I want to show you guys the difference. The metal cloaks are built just the same way as the uh, stock JTR, but nevertheless, there's the Evos. Now, I did want to point something out. On the top, the very top of the sway bar, you will have to drill this bolt out to a half inch. So I'm gonna knock that out and we'll get this one put in. Okay, JT owners, I want to show you guys this real quick, just so you know. So here's it completing the setup, but also remember, so, You'll have to do this spacer system that they send along with the kit and you re reuse your bolt. So that's the way it goes. Big washer or big spacer on the outside, little washer, little spacer on the inside, and then sandwich between. Anyway, let me uh, do the other side and then we'll be done. Okay, so it's finished. Um, I went ahead and did a test drive. And it, it does, it feels fantastic. Um, not that, not to say that you could feel it immediately, but just the combination of everything and the tautness um, just feels super stable uh, laterally. And everybody knows how, you know, a lifted Jeep is kind of, unless you've got everything super stiff, um, everything tends to feel, uh, how would you say it? a little um, soft going left to right. And so you always feel, you know, a slight bit of body roll. But uh, guys, it, it did the trick and I think it's gonna be, uh, you know, I think it does the trick from here on out, to be honest. So that being said, this is a wrap. Um, please kind of consider the guidelines uh, that I threw out to do this and it'll go in pretty, pretty easy. And, and it's about an hour long job. Uh, remember that when you do drill the half inch holes out for both sides at the spray bar, point to that hole. right here, when you drill this hole out to a half inch, make sure you get some hardened bits. And the reason why I say that is because you need a hardened steel bit because that's hardened steel. And any general type bit, it'll just eat through. Now I used a hardened steel bit and I used a little bit of cutting oil and it went through pretty quickly. So be mindful of that. Other than that, I think it's a hell of a product upgrade. I think by seeing the fit and finish in the actual piece of equipment with the Heinz, that just makes the biggest difference. So if you look at the standard um, sway bar in links, they've got a ball and socket type. And the problem with that is is it doesn't give you enough flexibility in what you're doing before you release your uh, sway bar. You want to have, you know, multi-flexion is what it's called, this way and this way before you break your sway bars loose because not all the time are you going to run it with the sway bar disconnected. So you don't want to bind everything and the stock joints cause binding. And I think that that's what caused the break. I think that's what's caused the failure on the metal cloak one. And I think it's what caused the failure on the first set of JT ones. I think you'll have to understand that when I was researching this lift, and if you go back and look at some of the videos and the build videos, I'll talk about that extensively, that with this metal cloak lift, they definitely tell you it's got the longest droop in the class for a three, three and a half inch lift. And so that's why they require you to get a drive shaft with them. All those other lifts say, oh, it's optional or you don't need it. Well, that means they're selling you a lift that won't give you the full inch, the three and a half inches. Uh, and so this gives you full length droop. And I think that that's what was causing problems with their uh, swimmer in links and again, the stock swimmer in links. And so 
This, I went out there, these are um, 14 and a half inches long and, and you see I've got them fully compressed and the reason why I wanted to do that is because the threaded parts where you get your uh, weaknesses and so I got them a little bit longer, a half inch longer so I could run them all the way in and I think it did the job. So, that being said guys, uh, let's close this bad boy out. Um, unfortunately, we just knocked this video out. Uh, this will probably be the last uh, JT upgrade video you guys see. Um, sad, I'm very sad. I've been driving it around and and now that it's finished and, and it's only been a few days that I've had it back since it was completely finished. Shocks, we have our in links, um, new gear set. Uh, the upgraded steering from RPM, just, you know, the Falcon 3.0 or 3.1 adjustable. All the slops going on the steering. Um, it really is just like real good right now. Um, I will tell you this, just so you know, tentatively, remember we were, uh, we've got built bumpers, uh, front and back. We've got the Baja rack built in the back. We've got the slide system built in the back. Uh, with the 100 amp AGM battery in the back. There's an invert, a 2000 watt inverter in the back on the slide. Um, we've got the pancake compressor on the slide. And then of course you've got the built rock rails, all the lift, steering, all that stuff. In town, about the best I could get on 40 bead locks, 39 bead locks. On the best in town, I was able to kind of get about, you know, 11 to 13, depending on how I drove. And since doing the gears, um, driving in town, I think the last time I looked at it, it said 17.6. That's in town driving. Because again, when you're doing gears, they don't want you to go over 55 miles an hour. They don't want you to drive the same speed limit for an extended period of time. And they don't want you to go more than 15 minutes at a time before you let it cool down. At least cool to the hand when you touch the diff or at least 45 minutes. And so literally city driving and I'm getting 17.6. Like I can only imagine what this big fat guy would do with all the delete and all the gearing preparation stuff on the highway at just 75. Just, I don't know. I, I'd probably throw something plus 20 out there. Plus 20 on 40s. God, like I'm just blown away. So anyway, Evo HD heavy duty, uh, sway bar end links adjustable with Himes. Product gets a, a 10 out of 10 from me. The fit and finish is fantastic. Uh, easy, it went together easy and super impressed with them. So if you're looking for heavy duty in, uh, sway bar in links, and this video is not sponsored, uh, Mel is the one that suggested these things uh, from Evo. And you know what? They are fantastic. And I give them, like I said, 10 stars. They are perfect. All right, thanks for watching. Okay, there you guys go. I wanted to show you this real quick. Um, so uh, since the gears were installed, 82 miles, there is your in-town mileage right now, guys. 17.8. Mama, eat your heart out. That's 17.8. This truck weighs over 7,000 pounds on 40-inch beadlocks. And I'm getting 17.8. Man. It pains me to have to let this dude go. I've been struggling to get a Jeep to act like this. Anyway, there you go. If you're wondering what your uh, Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel was capable of, here you go.